In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom carousel with custom templates for your items inside of Elementor, just like you see over here. So let's not hesitate too much and get started. Before starting to create our loop items, we're going to need to have some preparations done in our WordPress website. So the first preparations I'm going to do is going to be in posts categories, and I'm going to add a new category, which is going to be called recipe. These recipes are going to be used as posts. So I'm going to add posts and tag them with the category recipe. So just click add new category. And we're all set up with the category. Now before adding my posts, I want to add some custom fields to my posts, which will be for the recipe data. For example, preparation time and category type maybe to say if it's going to be spicy or not. So these are fields that don't exist in posts right now, and we're going to add them using a plugin that's called Advanced Custom Fields, which is a free plugin. Let's jump into plugins, and over here I'm going to click Add New, and search for Advanced Custom Fields. It's going to find the advanced custom fields. You can see it's very popular, more than 1 million active installations. I'm going to install it, and then I'm going to activate it, just like we do with every plugin that we install. We need to activate the plugin for it to show up in the WordPress menu. Now, over here in the menu, it's going to show as custom field. So let's click on that once. And the first thing we need to do over here is add a new field group going to click add new field group and over here in the field group I'm going to call this recipe as well and over here we have rules the rules are for deciding where this group of new fields is going to show so over here I can choose for example and this is just for example purposes you can see that there are many types of ways that you can uh, decide to show this, this set of new custom fields, but I'm going to choose category, which I just added inside of posts and categories. And you can see that it already has recipe selected because I just have only one category. It selected it. And now we can start adding the fields. So what this is doing, it's saying each post that's assigned to the recipe category we'll have these new set of fields that we're going to add right now. So let's add a field. And the first field is going to be preparation time. Let's just fix that. And down here, you can add a new field. The next field is going to be for maybe type, for the food type. And the last field, maybe let's do difficulty. Awesome. So we have our three custom fields. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you how these show up inside of your post. So let's click publish to publish this. And I'm going to jump into posts. We're going to add a new post. And over here, what I'm going to do, give my post a name, for example, hamburger. And over here in categories, I'm going to assign it to the recipe category. Now you can see that once I select the recipe category, it's showing me the custom fields that I've added to that category. So preparation time for hamburger is gonna be 30 minutes for the recipe. The type is going to be fast food, and the difficulty is going to be easy. So we have our, everything set up over here. Let's add a featured image. So I'm going to select upload, select, upload my hamburger image. 
set feature, featured image and you can also add some text over here and I'm going to say traditional American fast food dish this is just for example purposes so you can play around with this and I'm going to click publish of course you're going to want to add your whole recipe over here but right now just for the demo I'm adding only this text and we have everything set up so let's go back into the post list here's our hamburger and like this I'm going to add a couple more items now not to take much time from the video I'm going to add the items and then I'll continue the tutorial so see you in a minute awesome so I've added all of my posts and assigned all of them to the category recipe and added to each one of them the custom fields I've populated the, the custom fields I've added the featured image to each one of them and now we're going to jump into the plugin that's called unlimited elements if you're not familiar with it you're going to need to purchase the pro version on our website unlimited-elements.com jump into the pricing and choose the one that suits you best now in the tutorial today you can actually choose from any of these layouts I'm going to use the carousel layout in the tutorial but you could also make this just a static grid tab slider accordion any of these so I've hovered over the carousel clicked install and now we have it in our widget pane inside of Elementor the next thing I'm going to do is jump into templates theme builder inside of Elementor you're going to need Elementor Pro to do this and let's jump into single post what we're going to do right now is actually create our item the item that's going to loop itself inside of the category so click add new single post I'm gonna call it recipe and click create template now what it's going to do Elementor is going to suggest all sorts of predefined templates that we can use but we're not going to use any of these we're going to want to use a blank template so to use a blank template up here we have the close button I'm gonna click on that close once and down here is where we're going to start designing our template so just as an example let's select a featured image and push it into our design now in my case it's taking the correct post because I don't have many posts and it's just going to use the last post we've added but if it's not choosing the correct post for the demo data for creating just that one item you can jump over here into the settings and in preview settings over here you can decide which one we want to shoot to show for example purposes so let's just change this to hamburger just to show how it looks don't forget to click apply and preview that will refresh the page and load the new data awesome so because we're making just one item inside of a carousel what we're going to do is narrow down our section width so I'm gonna click on the section and over here I'm going to choose 500 for the width of the section because it's just one item we can even maybe decide to make it 400 so you're going to manually need to input this inside and another thing that you might want to do is change the cap the columns gap to let's say no gap so we have no gap over here and we can continue designing our item so let's push in the title because of course we're going to want the title to show up click the widgets pane maybe show the content under that and now is the part where we're going to want to start adding our custom fields the way I'm going to add the custom fields is actually in a list layout I think so let's search for the list over here if I won't find it maybe okay let's use icon list now you can use anything you can do it in any way that you like but 
I like the list because it has icons and we're going to choose an icon for each one of these. So let's jump in and see what we're going to do. So let's click on the first item. And over here, instead of inputting static data, I'm going to add a dynamic tag and I'm going to choose an AS, ACF field. And over here in the key, I can choose which type of data I want to show. For example, I'm going to show preparation time. This is the custom field we added earlier. Let's change its icon to something relevant. And look how awesome that is. So we're starting to pull in dynamic data into our grid item or our carousel item. So this is just one item that's going to be in an interactive carousel. So we're going to want to do this again and again for the two next fields. Let's choose a key again by clicking it type so in type let's use the icon maybe utensils which is like a fork and a knife and the last one for the last one let's just choose a star icon and i think that's for difficulty like hard easy medium stuff like that so again this is just for example purposes just to show you what you can do, for example, if uh, maybe this is something that's going to cost money, there's going to be a price and stuff like that. So great, we have all of this set up. Another uh, important thing that I want is a button to show the full recipe, because right now this is just a preview of the recipe. So what I'm going to do actually is, first of all, I think I need a intersection over here because I want to add some padding. Let's delete the column. Let's push everything inside of here, just so it's not close to the side. The image is good that it's going full width, but this data over here, I'm not sure I want that to be full width. And we can change the colors a little bit. I'm not going to touch this too much because I want to make this tutorial pretty quick, but just to get the point that you can design it however you want. Looking awesome and let's add a button so i'm just going to make a cool effect with a button let's add a button over here and i'm going to call the button view full recipe and now i'm going to show you how i'm going to position this in absolute positioning so let's jump into advanced and in positioning with inline auto absolute snap it to the right snap it to the top and we are going to push it 20 pixels from the top and 20 pixels from the right so that's just a quick example of how i can position this nicely and two more things or three little more things before we continue to our carousel let's jump into the content of the button and link this because right now it just has no link <laughs> has a static link so we're going to use the dynamic tags to link this to our post URL. Awesome. So now when you're going to click on it, it's going to show you the full post. And let's see what else we need. I'm going to jump into the image, going into style. In width, I'm going to select 100%. And in height, I want to constrain the height of this. Now, the reason I'm constraining the height is because I have images in all sorts of heights and I don't want my carousel items to be different. I want all the images to be the same height. So I change the height. You can see it's squishing the image over here. So in object fit, we can just use cover. Make sure to notice that you're going to have this option only if you input it inside the height. And I think this is looking pretty awesome. Let's uh, just finish this up with adding a small divider over here, maybe to divide from the top part to the bottom, add sort of an icon to make the design look cool. And that's about it. Now you can do this for hours and design it exactly the way you want, add as many custom fields as you want and click publish. Now over here, it's not important to add a condition. We can just click save and close and it's going to add that to our uh, templates. So save and close, add it to the templates. 
going to exit to my dashboard and now we can create a page adding that carousel so let's click add new over here i'm going to give this a name let's call it carousel loop demo edit with elementor and over here on the left side in the widgets pane i'm going to search for the widget that we've downloaded from unlimited elements widget library so let's look for the word carousel and over here we can see dynamic template carousel let's push that inside of the page and the first thing we're going to want to do is choose a template so let's search for the template i think we called that recipe and now it's loading a recipe template inside of here the next thing and this is how we're going to finish this up is actually you can see that it's loading all of our posts right now and not just the recipe posts so to filter our posts what we're going to need to do is actually configure a post query so i'm going to click on item post query and we have a lot of options over here for for advanced users for simple users but at the end of the day what i'm going to do is something very very simple and just in include by terms i'm going to select my recipe category and you can see it has only four items and now the posts that i don't want to show in this carousel are not showing in the carousel anymore look how awesome that is i mean in just a matter of minutes we've designed our own custom item design for our loop and again you can do this for uh, you can actually do this for grids for sliders for accordions and for tabs so it's pretty awesome i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions you can post them in the comments and i'll see you in the next video